Here we are at the uh, Ice Age State Trail. Um, the Ice Age State Trail goes for miles and miles, but uh, we are in part of the uh, Kettle Moraine State Forest System uh, near Holy Hill uh, to investigate the uh, 2006 Steve Kruger uh, bear wolf sighting. Uh, now, of course, we mentioned that in the, uh, the, the last video when we went out and scouted the actual location. And, uh, and we found some trails nearby, but we did a little more digging and uh, found some trails that will take us much closer and frankly, uh, more into the actual forest where if there is something living out here, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's much more likely to be in, in this area than, than where, uh, where we were last time. Uh, we brought a bullet with us, uh, <laughs> you know, um, mostly because, um, you know, as a dog, like his senses are, are, are much more highly uh, attuned uh, to his surroundings than ours are. So uh, if there is something out there, uh, he'll know it way before we do, and and we can use that uh, that that extra time. So um, I think we're ready. Yeah, let's go. All right, let's do it. So this should uh, meet up with the uh, the Ice Age Trail shortly. So behind us you can see Holy Hill Road, and if you followed that road for less than one mile, you would be at the site of the 2006 uh, Steve Kruger uh, bear wolf sighting. So we're going to continue across the road here. The Ice Age Trail uh, continues for some time. We're going to go at least all the way around Holy Hill itself. Uh, from here on out, the terrain gets a little thicker. so. Uh, should be interesting. It's pretty hilly over here. <clears throat> Go figure though, I guess that's uh Yeah, that's why they call it the Ice Age Trail, huh?
Alright, this is the actual Holy Hill segment. Oh, no. Oh. Well, maybe. Did they? Yeah. Oh, well this is like, but this is like the actual part. Where you go around the hill, I think. See, right there. Must be that tree over there creaking. X. Hmm? J points those out. Where? Come boy. That's not creepy at all. Yes, I did. What well, the hell was it? Seriously. It sounded like a laugh. But distorted. Yeah. Okay, we entered the creepy part of the hike.
could be that old. Did you check and see what time sunset is today? Yeah. What time? What? Yeah, 4.28. Okay, what time is it now? 3.30? 3.46. Oh, okay. So, 45 minutes. Well, no matter what, we'll, we'll, it'll be dark out here. Yeah. Over here. Wind's really picking up. Yeah. What is that? Did you hear that, right? Yeah. That was a tree. That's not the sound of the I mean, the kettle can do some weird things yeah. to sound, but still, we have you. Yeah. Alright, if we press on, uh, we can make it to the... Bullet, I swear, if you fall off this hill. Let's just go to that little top of this ridge. Okay. See what there is to see. Alright, so uh, we are all the way around Holy Hill, and we're about to uh, to head back. You know, we've hiked uh, several miles at this point, and uh, it's going to be dark in you know maybe 30 minutes. So we'll uh, we'll well maybe more like 45. Uh, depends on how long it takes the, the sun to set. But so far, uh, you know. There was a decent amount of other foot traffic when we first got here, but that thinned out pretty quickly the further we got into the Ice Age Trail. And uh, we have heard and seen some some weird things. Uh, what have you heard? 
Um, I think the most distinct for me was like it sounded like a child laughing, but like very distorted. That was super weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I definitely heard that too. I heard something that sounded like a uh, baby crying uh, when we were some ways back on the trail as well. Um, it's been, uh, yeah, it's it's been odd. There are some some dead trees sort of swaying and creaking out here, and uh, and you may hear that on on the on this video. But um, you know what what we heard sounded distinct from that. Um, mm -hmm. The kettle can do weird things with sound, so it's very difficult to say what that means exactly. But uh, but definitely some uh, some definitely some strange things, uh, you know. And uh, and we'll just leave it at that and uh, and see what else happens as it uh, as it gets dark out. We've definitely heard some like bird calls too. Mm -hmm. but nothing that we're familiar with so we'll have to look those up as well we well, can't really confirm those as bird calls honestly uh we That's heard often... somebody whistling or something whistling uh could, could have been a, a, a bird that we're unfamiliar with definitely sounded like whistling to me um that's not completely out of the realm of possibility for a bird but uh it's a little premature to say you know absolutely with 100 percent certainty that, that we can say exactly what that is so mm -hmm. uh weird stuff we'll uh we'll see if it continues yeah, we should be able to. <clears throat> Don't want anybody falling in any kettles. Yeah, it's a good thing the dog has his harness on, because yeah. otherwise he'd be yanking whoever was holding him down into a kettle like an idiot. Come on, bud. I know. You're after something. Where? What? Where? Oh, yeah, it was directly behind a tree, so I couldn't see it. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's probably a reason for it. With the sky as overcast as it is, I bet it just goes from being like gloomy to being dark. Yep. It's not going to be any sunset tonight. Not trees creaking. Weird. All right. That's a tree creaking, but it sounds like obvious creaking. It's a little observ uh, observation area up there. You want to check it out real quick? Huh? Want to check out that observation area real quick? Where we were before? No, this is a different one.
another one. that both of them have it. Yeah, I wonder if it's like, a, you know, like a shelter that hikers put up on the yeah. Ice Age Trail or something. Yeah. Because people overnight on this trail. Yeah. You know? They might be carrying a tarp and like a sleeping bag. Sure. So you could throw a, a tarp over that, you know, have your, your bedroll or whatever and be pretty much okay. I mean, it's on the high ground, so if it's raining or something, you don't have to worry about that. Right. That's my guess, anyway. you say something? No. Really? Yeah. Okay. I could have sworn I heard somebody say something. You didn't hear that? No. Huh. Okay. Did you hear that? No. Oh, it sounded like, I don't know, maybe like a woodpecker or something knocking on a tree. Or something knocking on a tree. Could have been a, like a woodpecker though. We have those here, don't we? For some reason. Take a picture of it. better. It's always so, I don't know, uncanny being out in the woods at twilight. Everything just takes on a sort of strange quality. pretty cool. Yeah, that looks really cool. This one might even be a little better. Oh yeah, I like that one. Yeah. Pretty cool. 
cool. A little spooky, huh? Have you seen any of those little lights like we see at the kettle sometimes? The really small ones? Yeah. You have? A couple. Yeah, me too. Not very not as many as the kettle, but a couple. Yeah, I've seen like three so far. Here we are coming up on Holy Hill Road again. Less than a mile to our east is where the bear wolf sighting took place in uh, 2006, I believe. So not too far from where we've been at, at any point, actually, this evening. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of eerie to think about, right? Mm -hmm. Really is less than half a mile <laughs> in the direction that that loud truck just went is where uh, Steve Kruger said he had his sighting. And it really wasn't that long ago if you think about it. I'm sure other people have... Uh, probably seen things since, or claim to have seen things since. We both know we don't always hear about that stuff when it happens. It's when you're out here in the dark, when it becomes very easy to believe the stories. Did you hear that? Yes. Okay, me too. I'm telling you, it sounds like... I don't know. It sounds like something crying.
you hear that? It sounds like a snort. Going off the track. Oh, I hate that much. Yeah, not great. Let's go. that sounded like somebody yelling woo but like high pitched well there is definitely nobody here but us now Well, that was interesting. Um, you know, we didn't uh, we didn't get eyes on a, a bear wolf, but I can tell you honestly, a lot of the weird stuff that we've seen and it well heard, experienced uh, at the uh, the other Kettle Moraine State Forest site that we go to with uh, you know Jay and, and Adam frequently um, seems to be consistent here as well. A couple things that were new to me. Um, I kept hearing something that sounded like crying, which was weird. It sounded like a, a baby or child sort of crying. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to know exactly what to do with that. Um, it doesn't seem super likely that it would have been a young animal or something. Um, I mean, somebody at one point pointed out a deer, but... Right, but think about what time of year it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. Um, it's already no, not like mid-November. Yeah. You know, how many deer are being born right now? Right. Um, also, the noise that sounded like distorted child laughter was probably the creepiest for me. Yeah, that was super creepy too. And I, I should say as well, like, I've heard the bleeding, like the bleating, rather, of a, a baby deer. Yeah. And I don't think that's the crying that I heard. It sounded human, but there wasn't anybody around that could account for for that sound so right um that seemed uh that seemed unusual yeah the distorted laughter mm -hmm. was uh was odd for sure um what else the like little fairy lights that we see out in the cuddle we saw a couple of those yeah there were a few of those obviously temperatures right now uh it's 42 degrees according to the car thermometer that doesn't allow for anything like lightning bugs or, or anything else to be out. Um, so that was unusual. Uh, there was no reflective surfaces, you know, in the in this forest for anything to be reflecting. And you could of. see like lights from like the monastery, like in the distance, because they would stay pretty stationary as you moved. So like those, you you almost it was almost nice to have that. Because you almost use that as an example to rule other things out. Yeah, I mean, those those stationary lights on buildings and stuff are pretty easy to make out, you know. Yeah. And there were a few of them, of course, because there's a giant monastery out here uh, that, you know, you can see from space. So um, there's a good uh, example, mm -hmm. like what Emily's talking about. Uh, can you think of anything else? You said you heard a snort on the way back. I did. Uh, there, That was a definite snort. Now that... Uh, could be attributed to a deer um, uh -huh. because they they will make that that noise so that's one um, I did hear a very loud sort of like snort um, so uh, you know who knows that that one honestly you know like I said could have been a, a normal animal because a deer will make that that sound mm -hmm. Uh, and there are deer out here, so you have to be able to, to rule that out, of course. Um, so that's that's one that I, I would be relatively comfortable explaining away as, as a deer. Uh, still, it gets real eerie out here at night. Uh, very easy to believe that there could be something strange lurking out here. You know, um, 
the trails, like they weren't busy, but there were other people out here when we first got here. Uh, now, you know, sun's down, there is nobody here. Mm -hmm. So if you're talking about something, say, uh, say it was an undiscovered animal or something, uh, that's nocturnal. It'd be real easy if it had a, a nice place to hide during during the day. Most people don't venture off these trails. So if mm -hmm. it lived off like somewhere off of the trails or something, mm -hmm. uh, and only came out at night, boy, uh, people would only see it, you know, very very rarely, mm -hmm. um, which would lead to sightings, you know, like uh, Steve Kruger's. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, interesting stuff. While we're out here, we want to do a, uh, a nighttime drive-through of that uh, that Steve Kruger uh, witness area, like that sighting area. So, uh, what do you think? Should we head over there? Yeah. All right, let's do it. these houses back up to the Kettle Moraine State Forest. But this would have been, you know, the route uh, the witness was taking, Steve Kruger, when he had his sighting. Probably looked a lot like this. It was this time of year. See Holy Hill in the background there. And then right here at the corner is where uh, he experienced the, the bear wolf. So interesting stuff. You know, we certainly have some food for thought here and um, we'll definitely be coming back uh, certainly with uh, with Jay and, and Adam and our, mm -hmm. our regular crew because I think that there's some interesting stuff going on out here and we definitely want to check it out. 